It's unlike anything we've seen. It's a sea of, of, of trash. Now at six, an unprecedented amount of sewage still left in the Tijuana River Valley. What state lawmakers plan to do about it? Californians are fed up. My constituents are pissed off. Plus at six, some Californians can soon see hundreds of dollars a year added onto their utility bills. What lawmakers are now worried about. Uh, Super Bowl tears of joy or sadness. Yeah, how fans across our county here in San Diego are reacting now to the Kansas City Chiefs win. And now we are going to start this hour with breaking news. This out of Lakeside. Take a look at this video here. Ooh, that's mm. quite a crash. A driver somehow lost control of their vehicle and rolled down this driveway and slammed right into this house. It happened just after three this morning in the 9000 block of Winter Gardens Boulevard. Now it's not clear if anyone was inside that home at the time. Also not clear if alcohol or drugs played a factor in this crash. The condition of the driver not known at this time. And more breaking news. We're following a man shot and killed outside of this gas station in Fallbrook. It happened last night just after 830 in the 100 block of Ammunition Road at Main Avenue. Sheriff's deputies say the victim died right there at the scene. Not clear what led to the shooting, but witnesses told deputies that the suspect drove off. Deputies later found the suspect. They were able to detain him, but they're still looking for more information. If you know what happened with this shooting, maybe you're a witness, please contact the sheriff's department. And now here's a question for you. Did you feel a little shaking overnight? Well, a total of 14 earthquakes were reported near El Centro, just a couple hours east of here. The largest was a 4.8 magnitude just before midnight, then followed by smaller quakes. So far, no reports of any injuries or damage. Glad you're with us here on this Monday, everyone. Time now 6.02. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Netta Irampour. It's been a busy morning so far, but at yeah. least in the weather department, things are calmer. So glad to see that, Evan, uh, that the sun yes. came out and brought us you know, yes. a little more joy over the it weekend. Was nice. <laughs> it was nice. Yeah. nice weekend, and now we carry on over with a very nice week ahead. Yeah, Mild, yeah. dry, not a lot of trouble that we have on the way this week. Good morning to you. We hope you're doing all right, hanging in there, drinking plenty of water this uh, morning after the Super Bowl. If you're headed outside and on your way to work or dropping the kids off at school. Here's where the emphasis comes in of bringing a jacket with you and likely the warmer jacket you have. Ramona is at 31 degrees right now, sub freezing 35 in Poway, 36 in Escondido and El Cajon right now and 41 in Encinitas. That prompted a frost advisory that will remain in effect through 8 a.m. Another two hours on it. Coming up, we'll talk about these cold overnight low temperatures, but about how long we'll be seeing the dry skies last for details in just a few. Back to you. Okay, nice and snuggly this morning. Yeah, right. Thank you, Evan. And now in just a couple of hours, local and environmental leaders will be coming together to announce a so-called package of environmental justice legislation. Yeah, this has South Bay communities continue to deal with massive amounts of sewage and trash coming from Mexico. CBS 8's Chris Grove live in Imperial Beach now with more on uh, what we know about all this this morning. Chris. Yeah, good morning, guys, and we'll find out a little bit more in less than three hours now. What we do know is that so many people here in the South Bay are fed up with this problem, that when we see this rain, especially like we saw there at the end of January, you are seeing billions of gallons of sewage flow from Mexico into the U.S. here through the Tijuana River Valley, and they are fed up. I've never seen it flooded the way the Tijuana River Valley is flooded right now or the amount of trash or sewage that has come across the border. Yeah, we saw trash, we saw sewage, and, and again, it was a pretty uh, disastrous sight there to see. Now, as for what we'll be seeing today here is that State Senator Steve Padilla and other community leaders, labor leaders, environmental advocates will be announcing a package of, quote, environmental justice legislation to address cross-border pollution from trash and human waste as well as halting development of a landfill that would only cause further harm to the impacted communities. Now, as far as the impact to the community here in the South Bay, we know that a number of beach closures happen like the ones that we have going on right now. In fact, you have the sign here that says keep out of the water, sewage, chemical, contaminated water. Unfortunately, though, we still people we still see people go out into the water like we just saw a short time ago here off camera. 
when the beaches are closed here, uh, maybe even more so during the spring and the summer months, you do see a lot of the businesses that suffer because people decide not to maybe spend their time in Imperial Beach and some of the other South Bay communities and stay here. And so we've seen a lot of businesses speak out about this. There's the environmental concern and then, of course, the health impacts that are happening, not just from going out into water, but also the air here. They have found that a lot of that same uh, contaminants there in the sewage, in the water, also found in the air particles as well too, the air that we breathe. So we'll be hearing again less than three hours now from State Senator Steve Padilla as well as other local leaders about what they plan to do to address this here on the state level, especially as we wait con to continue to see the federal government response here, um, especially after these recent rains and the most recent exposure here to that cross border pollution. Eric Canetta. All right, Chris, thank you for that. Take a look at your screen here. Right now, San Diego County residents are being urged to avoid contact with coastal waters until at least 9 a.m. today. Now, this is due to increased bacteria levels caused by runoff from last week's rain. Water contact closures remain in effect at the following locations, including Ocean Beach, Dog Beach, as well as the Silver Strand, Imperial Beach, and Coronado shorelines. This is according to the County Department of Environmental Health and Quality. The county says activities like swimming, surfing, and diving should be avoided in the days after heavy rainfall. And this morning, we now know more about the five Marines killed in Tuesday night's helicopter crash in Pine Valley. The military released their identities and pictures on Friday, and you can see them here. None of them are older than 28 years old. Family and friends sharing tributes from all across the country. We talked with Sergeant Alec Langen's older sister. She says losing him leaves a void in their family no one can fill. He died doing what he loved. I know that he didn't want to leave any of us, but that he's going to be there protecting us for the rest of our lives. The other victims of the crash, 27-year-old Captain Benjamin Moulton, 26-year-old Captain Jack Casey, 28-year-old Captain Miguel Nava, and 21-year-old Lance Corporal Donovan Davis. We have more details on each service member on our website, cbs8.com. And now this morning, state lawmakers are flipping a sharp U-turn, ready to repeal a fee on electric bills before it ever even goes into effect. Now, this new fee could add hundreds of dollars a year to some bills. CBS 8's Alex Lai working for your wallet this morning. And Alex, what are lawmakers uh, worried about now? Good morning, Eric and Netta. Lawmakers are worried right now that this could cause rates to be uh, too high for many California residents. And also they're worried about the unintended consequences they think could come with this monthly fixed charge for electric bills uh, that they actually passed into effect or excuse me, they passed uh, just two years ago and it hasn't gone into effect yet, but it is planning to go into effect this summer. Now that that time is coming up that it might go into effect, um, they're paying much more attention to it than they were two years ago when it was originally passed. Now the monthly fee will be based on household income. So the state's utility commission has until July 1st to authorize this new rate structure. One proposal has suggested a charge of $34 a month for households earning $28,000 to $69,000, $73 a month for those earning $69,000 to $180,000, and $128 a month for those making about uh, $180,000 or more. One San Diego Assembly member says the fixed rate could add up to $1,500 per year for some households, but supporters of this fixed charge say it would help lower income customers and would reduce the average price per kilowatt hour. Now, some people supporting the move to repeal the fixed rate say since consumers would be charged regardless of how much energy they use, they'd, there'd be less of an incentive to conserve power, and San Diegans agree. If that was the case, then, you know, what's the point of turning off the lights when you leave the room? If I'm not using it, then why should I pay for it? And this legislation could be repealed immediately if it is approved by the Senate and Assembly and then is signed by the governor. So it could not go into effect at all. Uh, but if this isn't passed, it could go into effect starting in July. Coming up at 630, we'll tell you exactly what lawmakers say will happen if, they, uh, if this law is not repealed and does end up going into effect. At SDG&E headquarters, Alex Lai, CBS 8.
You know, those bills, something that affect all of us. Thank mm -hmm. you, Alex. With all the recent rain that we've seen, a lot of San Diegans are dealing with flooded homes, among them a family in San Carlos. But for them, this isn't a one time problem. They deal with flooding almost every time it rains. The city of San Diego has been telling them for months that help is on the way, but it's never arrived. CBS 8 Steve Price working for you, pressing the city for answers. When the city of San Diego started putting up these signs that work was going to start in the San Carlos neighborhood, Valerie McGee thought her prayers were finally going to be answered, that the city was actually going to do the work they said they would. But unfortunately, she has been disappointed again. All the water's coming down the hill and landing right over here into my yard. Last week's storm flooded the McGee family's home. And it's not the first time they've had to deal with this. It's very stressful. We first met Valerie McGee last March. This is unacceptable. I can't take it no more. She sent us video after video of flooding at her Marjoram Avenue home. Holy moly. The McGee's live on a road that slopes down and a drainage channel diverts water from a neighboring street onto theirs. So even a little rain leads to a lot of water and there's no storm drain to catch it. Working for you, CBS 8 reached out to the city back in March and they blamed the problem on the placement of the McGee's home, telling us in an email it was constructed below the street level with a driveway that slopes downhill toward the home. During intense rain, stormwater runoff flows downhill and spills over the driveway apron onto the property and into the garage. But as you can see in this video, the water isn't spilling over the driveway apron. It's jumping the curb before it even gets there and sandbags can't hold it back and are urging the city agreed to take another look and asked us to give them a couple months. In May, they told us our stormwater crews are working on a solution that they expect can be implemented before the next rainy season. The city told me that they would come out and put a drain right in front of my house. Valerie says the city also told her the work would definitely be done by the end of the year. They come out, they talk to me and say they're going to do it, but have it been done? No. Valerie saw what happened in Mountain View and feels their pain. The city knowing about a problem but doing nothing until it's too late. I don't know what's going to take me to lose my home. Working for you, CBS 8 reached back out to the city to find out why they didn't fix the problem. Instead of answering that question, they told us the work will be done by our in-house team, but I don't yet have a time when this will be funded and slated for construction. We followed up asking why there's been a delay and got this response from a spokesperson. I did bring it up to Stormwater staff and they are aware. I'll let you know when there are any updates. Thank you so much, Steve, because you've been reaching out to me more than the city has. CBS 8 will continue to press the city for a construction date. Just do what you say you're going to do and we're all fine. Just do what you say you're going to do. Come take care of this neighborhood, please. I'm begging you. Oh, that was Steve Price reporting yeah. out of that home in San Carlos. Uh, yeah, you saw the way the water was just pooling mm. up there. So starting today until February 27th, the city of San Diego is accepting grant applications for small businesses and nonprofits affected by floods. The grants offer up to $5,000. 100 of them are available. Eligible businesses must be located in high impact storm affected areas of the city of San Diego and have no more than 12 employees. They must also be independently owned and operated and have an active city business tax certificate. About $370,000 available right now funded by the Small Business Enhancement Program. So much happiness there. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Big group hug there. You just watched the moment Kansas City Chiefs got that touchdown with just three seconds left in overtime, securing their Super Bowl win.
This was the first Super Bowl played in Las Vegas, and it was definitely one to remember. Mm -hmm. The game started on a bit of a slow note, but quickly picked up in the second half with Kansas City ultimately coming out on top. And when I mean slow, there was, wasn't a lot of scoring, scoring, but good yeah. defense. Right, they yeah. did that well. Uh, you're now looking at the moment where fans reacted to the big win. So you see the Chiefs fans. Oh, this you side by see side the Niners is painful fans. for Niners Yeah, it fans. is so sad. Oh. Niner fans, of course, they're upset about this. They thought they had it, right, yeah, for most sure, of that. Sure. Uh, fans across the county also reacting to the big game. Let's take a listen to some San Diegans. It was a good game. Regardless, we, we put up a good fight. In the end, it was, it was risky, but it was a good fight. It was a really good fight. Ouch. Yeah, some of you are, yes, going home heartbroken or are home hopefully by now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you're still out, uh, but on the bright side, many live in sunny San Diego, so they're happy about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah tough that's for a good those way Niners. to look at it. A lot of Niners <laughs> parents on my uh, my kids baseball team right. and uh, they had all their Niners jerseys yeah. at our game yesterday. They were all pumped up and they were up by 10 points at one I point mean, and things were looking good. And then man, Patrick Mahomes, he is good. so good and dangerous with right. the football. Yes, so. Uh, yeah, hopefully you're Good game, recovering though. okay. Yeah. Uh, coming up next, a new update from the Middle East about the hostages still left there. Plus, the winter weather now headed to the Northeast. Stay with us, everyone. Take it a quick break.